avoid a single point of failure in the network, we have to configure a redundancy to increase the availability of devices. In this lab, we are going to build a switch network with redundant links. After we cable the network according to the lab topology, we start to configure the basic device settings. If you look at the lab manual link, it includes disabling the DNS lookup, configuring the device name, assigning the encrypted privilege exec mode password, password for the lines, including console and VTY, banner, and VLAN configuration, VLAN 1 configuration. Then you need to do the backup, copying the running config into the startup config. The only command that I added to this is service password encryption. This command encrypts all the password that you enter into the command line here. The basic device configuration are very similar, so we're only showing it on one device. And uh, you need to do it on all devices, but we're only showing one device here. To test the connectivity after configuring the basic device setting, we are going to ping S2 from S1, S3 from S1, and S3 from S2. So if all these pings are successful, it means that the configurations are correct. As you may know by now, a spanning tree protocol is a network protocol that makes sure we have a loop-free topology. A root bridge is a reference point in a spanning tree to calculate which path to block as a redundant path. The election for the root bridge is based on the bridge ID or BID. The bridge ID is made up of bridge priority value, an extended system ID and the MAC address of the switch. To find out the root bridge in this exercise, first we turn off all the ports on the switch or deactivate them. Then we configure the connected port as trunks, so F0 to 4 should be trunks. Then we only activate one link for each connection. So if you activate the F02 and F04, it only gives us one link in each uh, connection. After configuring the first four interfaces of each switch as a trunk, we are going to open or activate the uh, fast H02 and 04 on each switch to make sure that there is a communication going on between the switches without the redundant links. When you activate uh, FASTNET 02 and 04 on each switches, you see the output from the switches in the command line that shows that these interfaces are up. Root bridge is elected uh, based on the bridge ID and the MAC address. Uh, the lowest bridge ID is going to be the root, but in our example, the bridge IDs are the same, so the election is based on the MAC addresses. The lowest MAC address is going to become the root bridge. I highlighted the bridge ID priority and MAC address in each switch output from the show spanning tree command. In, our, in my lab experiment, switch 2 is a root bridge. You might get a different answer in your experiment.
spanning tree algorithm uses the root bridge as a reference point. Then it blocks port on based on the path cost. The port with the lower path, uh, path cost is preferred. This algorithm uses three different values to compare and choose the port to block. The first is the port cost. If they are all equal, then it checks the bridge ID, and if the bridge ID is equal, it checks the port priority. In this part of the lab, we are going to change the port cost to control which port is blocked by a spanning tree. Show a spanning tree command can help us find out which port is blocked on each switches. And also we can get some information like the MAC address, the bridge ID priority, and which switch is a root bridge. In my case, in my configuration, the switch 3 of port faster than 04 is blocked. By changing the cost on that port, I'm going to change this results. I'm going to change this value to 18. All other costs are 19. I'm just going to change this to 18 so it makes it the lowest. It takes uh, 30 seconds for the algorithm to change the port from the block to the forwarding position. So maybe the first time when I sh do the show a uh, spanning tree, I don't see the results I want to see. But eventually the faster 1004 on switch tree is going to change the status to forwarding uh, and uh, the faster 1004 on the other switch, which is our switch 1, is going to change into blocked. Now that we tested these changes by changing the cost, we are going to remove that cost for the next part of the lab. So they're all going to be 19 again. If you check the configuration by using the show spanning tree this time, you should see that everything is reversed back to what it was at the beginning. So all the costs should be 19 and the same port which was the fast attendance 04 on switch 3 should be blocked again. As I mentioned before, it takes 30 seconds for everything to take place for uh, expanding to the algorithm. this part of the lab, we are going to activate the redundant paths, which are fast at 10, 0, 1 and 3 on each switches, and see how the STP is going to select a port using the port priority. The default priority are 128. So after we activate all ports, the redundant port on all switches, we use the show spanning tree command to see how the selection is happening. Remember that we are interested on the switches, the non-root switches, which are S1 and S3. Answer the question in the lab manual based on the output of show spanning tree on S1 and S3. Thank you.